right, good evening, everyone. I'm Jenna Flanagan, host of Metro Focus on Channel 13, local PBS station in New York. And it is my pleasure to serve as MC once again for Forestdale's annual benefit. I know it feels like only five minutes have passed since we were last together, but it also feels like 10 years. It's just amazing how that happens. So thank you for joining us as we focus on the mental health needs of New York City families during the pandemic. Tonight is about triumph and healing, which Forestdale clients need more than ever. We've had a protracted period of upheaval, it's true, but we have also had stories of incredible resilience and growth from some people who have thrived in spite of their challenges. We're happy to celebrate some of the good news from this year with you this evening. And as always, we have incredible things on the horizon that we are thrilled to share as well. So for a quick tour of this event page, you can first and foremost donate, chat, and bid on auction items without missing any part of the program. The donation and auction buttons are below if you are on a desktop or laptop computer. And for mobile users, check the activity feed to chat with other guests. The auction button is under the activities. Take a look at the great items we have to offer. And remember that while fortune favors the bold, it also favors the quick. So action, the auction will be ending at 8 p.m. So action is required. And if you're on the fence about any item, hop off of it and bid. If you have any issues during the event, just click the contact organizer button and someone will be able to help you. So for tonight, Forestdale will recognize three exceptional individuals who are true champions in every meaning of the word. New York City Council Speaker Adrian Adams, foster parent extraordinaire Roxanne King Williams, and Brooklyn native and actor Tracy Morgan. We are so delighted to be able to honor them along with you. And we're going to begin with a slightly new segment, one that features Forestdale staff who provided exceptional service to children and families during the pandemic. We're eager to hear staff discuss the needs of families that they serve, but we'd also like to take a moment to appreciate the bold work of these essential workers. They made sure families got what they needed during the pandemic while the work itself was so challenging. I'm a family conference facilitator for Forestdale. Good morning. My name is Jenny Hertz. I'm the administrative supervisor of the Family Support Program in Forest Hills. Uh, my name is Catherine Teneo, and I am a case planner in the Family Support Unit. Really worked to with the resources that the agency provided us with um, access to iPads for our families, hotspots for internet. Uh, the case planners really work to try to support the families to kind of jump over those barriers and allow them to successfully have their children continue to do their education. The families that I was working with throughout the pandemic and that I continue to work with now, um, it was a lot of the um, cash assistance. Every single family that I've worked with needed it at some point or another. Um, during the pandemic, it wasn't only that families lost their jobs. Um, a lot of these families also have five kids in the home. And a lot of the things that I was hearing from the families is um, they're eating from the sun comes up until it goes down. Um, the children needed new clothing. That was also a very big one. Um, with a lot of uh, the families that we work with, many of them did lose their jobs. And so the priority became paying the rent. We were able to come in and, and help with those things because I think had we not been there, uh, I don't think that help would have come from anywhere else for these families. Forestdale has helped me and my family a great deal. It was a force that was helped. I was able to catch up with bills that I was that I need to catch up on. Grew up to get a lot of cash assistance, and this helped our family a great deal, especially during the pandemic, and helped us keep our heads above water, food in our fridge, and clothes on our daughter's back. We'd like to thank you guys. We are very, very appreciative of 
all your help and everything that the company has to offer. So thank you so much. We want to work on higher level things like getting our kids um, into therapy, allowing the families to function more effectively as a unit, and, and you know, increasing the safe communication in the home. But sometimes our families don't have diapers. Their kids are running around without diapers on and they, they, need, they need help. Recently, we had um, secret Santa donations from our, uh, from our funders, from our board members. But the Winter Wonderland was an event like no other. We had a lot of families that we invited come back and say, I've never done anything like that with my kids. You know, we're always so stressed out. I have to work three jobs to pay the bills. My kids are trying to do school. Uh, we have the stress about how we're going to keep food on the table, how we're going to keep a roof over our heads. Are my kids going to make it to school every day? Am I going to make time to get them to therapy? And this was just a time for them to just have fun and forget about all of those things. Um, I can go on and on and on, you know, regarding how the agency does assist the families in meeting their basic needs when the other resources, such as HRA, SSI, or the funding, is not there for them. So it plays a big role in terms of how Forestdale does put their money to work to assist the families. Now we have the supreme honor of introducing our first honoree, Adrian Adams. Forestdale is so pleased to be honoring New York City Council Speaker Adrian Adams, who is from Queens and has spent her career uplifting the lives of families in the communities Forestdale serves and is universally admired in a city that rarely demonstrates universal admiration. We would also like to present colleagues of the speaker and members of the city council, uh, Natasha Williams, uh, Savina Brooks, Powers, and Lynn Shulman. Hello, I'm Councilmember Natasha Williams, and I am proud to represent the 27th Council District. As a person who grew up with a mother who was a social worker, I have personal experience within this space of children and families, and I am so excited and thrilled that Forestdale is recognizing our speaker, Speaker Adrian Adams, for her leadership. As co-chair of the Queen's delegation, I know how important it is to have someone as our speaker who truly understands our communities, our families, and our children. Speaker Adams is the first African-American speaker and first Black woman to lead the most wonderfully diverse city council and is committed to public safety, healthcare equity, and affordable childcare services. And this is critically important to my district in itself. Forestdale is an amazing organization, and this event is dedicated to an important cause, the mental health and well-being of our children and families following the worst public health crisis is critical. And I want to thank you so much for doing this very important work. I can also say that I'm really excited to work with Forestdale as you open your new family enrichment center in my district. This is a great model as the services location and even the name of the center itself is determined by the community members who will ultimately use this center to strengthen our families. Congratulations again, Speaker Adrian and Adams for this wonderful recognition. I look forward to continuing to work with you and organizations like Forestdale to make sure that New York City children have what they need to thrive. New York City Councilwoman Sylvina Brooks Powers, representing the dynamic 31st District, representing the communities of Auburn, Brookville, Edgemere, Far Rockaway, Laurelton, Rosedale, and Springfield Gardens. I'm also proud to serve alongside my Madam Speaker, Adrienne Adams, as her majority whip. I am passionate about using my opportunity and public service to advance the cause of equity and access 
to resources for the most vulnerable New Yorkers. I am thrilled that Forest Dale is recognizing speaker Adrienne Adams for her leadership. I get to see every day how she uses her leadership to champion our distinctive communities, our families, and our children. Families need affordable, high quality childcare. And Speaker Adams has made that a top priority. Our families need equitable access to high quality healthcare. And Speaker Adams is also a champion of that need. These are issues that deeply impact the lives of the children and families that Forestdale serves. Forestdale's benefit is dedicated to an important cause. The mental health and well-being of children and families following the worst public health crisis of our time. 20% of New Yorkers experience mental illness every year. Families without insurance and low-income populations face a difficult time finding the help they need. Forestdale has been there for the families of Queens, and I really appreciate that. I will continue to champion the needs of vulnerable students and families, as evident in our city council's budget response, which includes needed mental health services, help for students, and for young people exhausted care. Congratulations, Speaker Adams. I am proud to be a part of your leadership team and work with organizations like Forestdale to make sure all New York City children and families get what they need in order to thrive. Thank you so much. I am Council Member Lynn Shulman. I represent the 29th Council District, which encompasses Forest Hills, Rigo Park, Kew Gardens, and Richmond Hill. I am so happy to have Forest Dale as a constituent. As a previous staffer at the City Council, I advocated on behalf of Forestdale and have continued that advocacy as a council member. I am also chair of the Health Committee, which oversees the health care of all New Yorkers, including those at Forestdale. Tonight, we are here to celebrate the mayor's co-equal partner in government, City Council Speaker Adrian Adams, the first African-American woman to be speaker of the City Council at a historic time when the majority of council members are women. I can't think of a more deserving person for this award. Speaker Adams is compassionate, kind, and strong, and has devoted her career to lifting up women, especially those who are underserved in our city. Congratulations, Speaker Adams, for your well-deserved recognition by Forestdale. Greetings. Thank you to the Forestdale Board of Directors, Annual Benefit Committee, and Executive Director Bill Weisberg for this amazing Community Champions Award. I'm so touched and humbled to receive this honor. As the new speaker of the New York City Council, which is now led by a women majority, I know how critical organizations and agencies like Forestdale are to the children and families of our city. Your foster care and adoption services are vital to the well-being of so many young people who need your support. And with your partnership with schools, faith institutions, businesses, and other community organizations, they're crucial to the holistic services that you provide. Your work is even more important now that we're in the third year of the pandemic, which has taken a significant toll on the mental health and well-being of our children. As a city, we must continue to provide nurturing, safe, and healing environments to support our youth. We can only do this in partnership with agencies like Forestdale. So congratulations on your annual benefit. Thank you so much for this incredible award. And keep up the life-changing work that you do on behalf of the children of the city of New York. Thank you. You know, what an exceptional leader. Thank you, Speaker, Speaker Adams. It is so important to have leaders that truly understand the need for family supports and the need for organizations like Forestdale. 
We serve a vital role in the community, and we are incredibly touched that you agreed to be our honoree, and the honor is all ours. And speaking of honor, we would like to send a special thank you to our sponsors. That includes Cigna, One Group, and PGP, who together are our lead sponsor, Corning, Hillary, and Joe Feshback, Lawrence and Lisa Ginsberg, Leanne Ginsberg, Chip and Ivana Smith, Sybil Shanewald, V Framework, and Zim Mechanical. Thank you so much. Now we'd love to tell you about a very special woman who had a calling to take care of children in need and answered it with her whole heart. Roxanne King-Williams is well-known and well-loved among Forestdale staff and families alike, and we think that you'll soon see why she was chosen for this year's Children's Champion. I'll let Board Chair Heather Murray do the honors in introducing our second honoree. Heather? I'm Heather Murray, Forestdale's board chair. I would like to thank the entire board for helping to put together this fabulous event and to extend a special thanks to our benefit co-chairs, Hillary Feshbach and Chip Smith. Hillary and Chip have done a great job navigating us through another year in which planning a large scale event has required a lot of flexibility and creativity. Now it is my pleasure to introduce the next honoree and I'm certain that after you meet her, you will understand why everyone who knows her lights up at the mention of her name. She's an absolute joy to be around, and she serves as a role model to our birth parents, staff, and the over 50 children that she has fostered since 2015. Please give a warm welcome to foster parent extraordinaire, Roxanne King-Williams. I got my house cleaned. I remember that day. I'm going up and down, looking everything, going over my notes, what I was taught in the math class and everything, and... Um, and then he came and he's looking around and I'm scared and he looks scared too. A group of four that I mentioned before, one of the group of four for this suit. And this young man was the first child to graduate in my home. And when I went to his high school graduation, he said to me, this certificate is for you because you did all the work, you know. And I had his sister who graduated Two years later, and she said the same thing, you know. She was even um, crown high school prom queen. She gave me the crown. She gave me the diploma. She said, this is not for me. It was all your support. So um, let's continue to support our kids. The care. Therapist, the tutor, and the song. Futures, I realize the kids, partners, and all of them. Um, we're... We're a team, and when we work together, the children thrive. I just remember this very gentle, um, calm demeanor, and um, morning, you, know, you could just see what she wanted the best for this child, and um, just came across. And you know, I, I just felt this connection to this, you know, very charming woman. And um, I'm just so proud of what she's been able to do for our team, for our kids. She's one of a kind. And that, um, you know, we see the care that she, that she brings to our children. Comes to every appointment. And I just, just makes the kids feel special. Um, and it makes us realize how special she is. Uh, I just, I always say, I always say that I wish we had I won't be greedy. I'll just say 10, 10 more Roxanne King Williams. And, um, you know, we would be the, we are the best foster care agency, but we'd be even better. So I thank you, Roxanne King Williams, for all the work that you've done for our kids. Appreciate you. And when you meet her, it just feels like you've known her forever. And I really think that that's um, why our kids are able to connect with her so well is she just has a sense of warmth and familiarity about her. Around when I first started, uh, I had a seven-year-old in Miss King's home. Um, this child was extremely traumatized. Um, <clears throat> she was seven years old, still in diapers. She was afraid of everything. Um, she, she hardly spoke. And, and slowly, while in Miss King's home, she came out of her shell. She really became a child. Um, and it was amazing to see her thrive in a setting where she felt safe and loved. Um, 
And I remember that um, a few days after Thanksgiving, while she was with Miss King, um, I asked her how her holiday was. And she was so excited to share with me that Miss King took her out to provide meals um, to people who didn't have access to Thanksgiving meals. Um, and I just think that that's so amazing that Miss King was able to share this um, sense of giving with this child. Um, this child has certainly been through her fair share of trauma, um, but this year she had a roof over, head, over her head. She had someone who cared about her and loved her and she was safe. Um, and Miss King taught her that she had something to give. Um, and I just think that speaks volumes about the kind of person that Miss King is um, and the values that she shares with our children. Um, so thank you so much for everything that you do, Miss King, and we are we are so grateful to have you in our community. And I'm really grateful to be in our home. And she always wanted the best for me, strict with education and everything. She always wanted the best for us to save our money and everything. So she, she, she basically helped us with going to college. She helped us prepare for the future. She's like a parent to us, you know, like a parent to me. I don't know how to explain it. It's like we have a lot of history with each other, you know. Uh, but... I am I'm grateful for to be in uh, her house and to have her to have me. We're so pleased to honor Rotson and King Williams for her amazing work with more than 50 young people whose lives she helped to transform as a volunteer foster parent. And everyone around Forestdale knows about that incredible work that she does. Not everyone knows, but I do as executive director, which is that she's a tremendous donor to Forestdale. She sends her own contributions to support our education and mental health and other programming. But also last year, when Equitable, her employer, the great financial services giant, awarded its national award for community service, they recognized her for her work. And of course, she turned around and donated the $10,000 award to Forestdale. So Roxanne, thank you so much. very much for this award. I especially want to thank the tender-hearted staff at Forestdale who nominated me for this honor. Thank you very much, Forestdale. It's funny though, I really feel my kids deserve this award. Lady Bird Johnson, our former first lady said, children are likely to live up to what you believe in them. Those more than 50 special, precious children that enter my home through placement or respite deserve sharing in this award. I couldn't do it without them being successful. However, it's a beautiful thing to be recognized and to know that others appreciate the love and care that you put into your craft. Children are a great investment for our future on planet Earth. You know, Nelson Mandela said, there can never be no keener revelation of a society's soul than the way in which it treats its children. As a middle child, I was taught to love with all my heart and with all my soul, be of service and have faith. Working at Forestdale made me realize that caring for children was like a missing piece of a puzzle in my life. I enjoy teaching and learning from them every day. It's a win-win situation. I was able to take them from where they were to where they needed to be. I also thrive to deal with the child's feelings first before teaching. This has helped me to be a good listener, listening to understand and not necessarily to respond. It doesn't cost much, you know, to make children feel special. But a little bit of your time, your talent, and your treasure. 
It's about loving them. Love is kind and love is patient. You know, looking back today, I think that my parents were unknowingly preparing me for this beautiful journey of foster care, especially in the capacity of caring for teens. I remember my mom always prepared an extra serving of meal for an uninvited guest. We always ask who that person was, but she never had a name. She would say someone out there will show up because they needed something to eat or someone to care for them. Many years later, I learned that my mom not only suffered depression as a form of mental illness, but was also a teen in crisis. Yes, I will admit with great pride that cooking and serving meals stayed with my siblings and I until today. Just ask my kids. Today I dedicate this honor to my mom and dad, my siblings, and the precious children that have come into my life. Thanks to Forestdale. I hope they all know how much they mean to me and how my life has been enriched through caring for them. It is indeed a great privilege and honor to serve children in care. Thank you again, Forestdale and staff, for nominating me. And may God bless Forestdale. Well, now we're back. That Hi. was beautiful. That truly was beautiful. It's always one of the most moving parts for me. So, uh, yeah, my name is Chip Smith and, and one of two co-chairs and just came on to say what a great evening it's been. Um, and this part is coming to you live. So it's one of those few parts that's going to have Bill holding his breath just to see if we can stick on script. We'll do our best, Bill. But um, I would like to begin with some expressions of gratitude, if that's OK, just because we have so much to be thankful for tonight. Um, I want to say, start by saying thank you to Jenna for hosting our event once again. It means a lot to have you back here. Um, it was so nice to see honor and to see and to honor Speaker Adrian Adams, truly historic nominee. And I have to tell you that I always, and I know this, I share this with the board members as well, get so moved by the story of our program honoree each year. And uh, this year, Roxanne was no exception to that. She was just absolutely awesome. Uh, so we thank you, Roxanne, hopefully watching and, and being able to see the appreciation that we have. Um, I'd like to take a chance to point out the remarkable work that's done really by the Forestdale staff, and they did it throughout the pandemic. Um, it was truly amazing work, and speaking again on behalf of the board, the parts of our meetings where we get in-depth updates on the various programs, to me, are always you know the most meaningful, uh, the most impactful, and a great reminder of why we serve. So uh, we are very thankful for the work of those in the board, for those that served on the event committee with myself and my co-chair. My co-chair you'll hear from here shortly with a, with a fun last intro uh, for, for a great last uh, honoree as well. And we're also thankful to Daly and Bill for, uh, for being able to pull this off. And now I will return to script, which is the fact that we're also thankful for our donors here tonight. So you can see up on the board, I think scrolling down the side, I see donations and bids from various board members. I see Elsa on there, Pooja, and, you know, there's still some some time to do that. Um, so from my standpoint, it's a good chance to, when you speak of those who donate, reinforce the chance to uh, reinforce the ability to let you know how your support, how your donations matter. And, uh, you know, it's a great reminder that your support is helping Forestdale address the mental health and well-being of children. And if you really think about it, the what we've all been through collectively for the past few years, it's been rough on everyone. There's been losses of loved ones. There's been losses of income. Uh, impacts to, to all of our quality of life. But I ask you to think tonight of the families coming to Forestdale because in addition to what everybody's been facing, they have the added stress of working multiple part-time jobs to support their children, possibly having no health insurance, having difficulty making the rent in New York City. And when the stress becomes too much, they come to Forestdale. And they come to Forestdale for parenting classes, for health services, for therapy, for material assistance. And with that as sort of the backdrop, you couple it with the added stress of poverty that results in psychiatric needs at twice the rate in low-income communities. And access to high-quality behavioral health is an important part of Forestdale's work. So this is possible because of your help, because of those that are stepping up, those that are donating, those that are volunteering their time, 
And to those of you who have already supported who are on the scrolling you know, donation list, we say thank you. And I think the big thing is, for those of you that have not, there's still plenty of time. So, uh, so hopefully you, you have the chance to do so. And along those lines, Danelia, I'm curious to, uh, to hear what the update is and what you can tell us about how things are going on with the auction. Okay, great. I've always wanted to be a QVC host, so this is perfect for me. Um, we have people who really either want to fly far away from where they are or they want to enjoy New York City because the two things that are really hot right now are the JetBlue tickets, of course. Those are always one of our biggest, um, most popular items. But we also have the Tavern on the Green, which, I mean, there's nine bids on it already. Um, I think it's really, it really speaks to the, um, you either want to celebrate uh, New York City or you want to just, you want to go someplace else for a little bit. And, um, but not only that, we have some great, we have other great items. We, there were t kind of three different types of, of prizes that we had this year, which was sports. The other one was travel. And then the other one was kind of, I called it the best of New York City. And so we have these wonderful um, options. If you just keep scrolling, you'll see, I'm sure there's something there that, that you'll want. We have staycations. We have, um, we have a Lobel's gift certificate. So we have things that are going and you have about half an hour. So if you're thinking about something, you might as well throw your bid in. Um, because if you were one of the bidders and you're the one that has it at eight o'clock, it's yours. So you want to make sure that you have that. And we want to also thank our, um, amazing donors. We've had such wonderful, um, comments here. Let's see. We had somebody who just said, uh, exceptional work. So thank you so much. It really means a lot to us. This event is uh, one of our favorites, and we love to be able to present auction items to our great guests and also to interact with you. So um, enjoy the rest of the evening. Enjoy making some bids, and uh, congratulations to the winners. And if you don't win, you can still donate. That's right. And if you just got outbid, don't let that happen. Yeah. Don't, don't, yeah, don't, don't let somebody else win. You put your bid back in there. Jenna, you made it. I think you're muted, Jenna, if you can hear us. Mute button, middle of the dashboard. So, Chip, what are you um, bidding on this, this evening? I am I'm keeping a close watch on the uh, the Forest Hills tickets as I've been part of that experience that's occurred before, and so I, I kind of have a personal connection with that, and mm -hmm. would just ask Chris McCormick to watch his back Ooh. because I'm uh, I'm making a run at that. Hey, John, apologies for that. I think we got you, we caught you on mute for a little bit there, so I, I think you may have returned to us just now. Sorry we missed whatever it was. <laughs> well, no, I was simply saying there's nothing wrong with a little healthy competition, especially when it's for a great cause. Exactly. Absolutely. 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 So let's make sure that it's nice and healthy. <laughs> I actually wanted to bid on some things, but I was thinking uh, none of them, I because I, I actually, uh, I'm transmitting tonight from Forestdale West. I'm in Los Angeles right now. And I was, I was, a lot of them made me kind of uh, homesick for New York City, I have to say. I was like, oh, I would love to go to that or I'd love to do this, but I can't. So for you lucky people that are still in New York, um, bid away is, um, you know, See, I, I'll live vicariously through you. Board member David Weber is now up top, I think, on the entire suite for a Nets game. That's pretty cool, an entire suite for the next game. Oh, I'm going to wow. catch flack from David for calling him out for that. So if he gets any competition right now, I'll, I'll probably have to oh, yeah, take David to a, a Nets game. But it's, uh, yeah, there really are. There's some, some great prizes there. I encourage uh, everyone to go in and take a look at what's left at this point. Um, I think it's appropriate also. I think we had a few things that had a buy now attached to them. So when we had this up and there, it's an opportunity for us to say thank you to the Mets, for instance, for some donations that they did on, on some tickets that took place where I think they got scooped up already by people who were just willing to do the bid now. And, um, and we're really appreciative of the supports, support that the Mets have had, um, especially with the new ownership coming in. And it's not just related to this event. I think it's been for, for, for many things. So thank you. Yes, the Mets have been great. Um, they, they had a wonderful event um, during the holidays for the children, um, for a, a few children that were in our care. And it was just this wonderful event where they, they got to do a 
shopping spree and you could see the kind of um, the joy that was in their faces. And again, it's what, it's like one of those events that um, the staff had been talking about, the winter wonderland, where sometimes you just need a break. And it's a really good time during the holidays to be able to do that. And we, we were very appreciative that we were able to offer that to them. And boom, I see Jonathan Taylor, board member, just a $1,000 donation. He sent me oh, a side right. text just saying anything to get Chip to stop talking. So <laughs> any amount of money in there. But thank you. Seriously, thank you all. Yeah, if anybody wants to donate to get me to stop talking, we'll gladly take that as well. <laughs> Uh, that, but yeah, the um, I have to say that we're at 122,641, uh, so 90% of our 135,000 goal, which all of these funds go towards back towards programming. They go towards making sure that families have exactly what they need, um, not only during the pandemic, but onwards. So things that get them from just kind of living in crisis mode into being in this kind of acute crisis to being able to thrive. So your work tonight, the work that we've done all the way up through the, the past few months for planning for this event, though, that has all helped, and that will all go in towards helping families in Brooklyn and Queens. So, again, we can't thank you enough, but we are going to continue to try to do that for you. Well put. Half hour left. We can we can do this. A little less than a half hour. Oh wow! Yeah, Th these fly every year. Every year this flies. I think there's. I think it's because every second is planned, and then when it happens, it's like being on a roller coaster. Absolutely. Well, great job leading this, uh, Danelia. Janet, thank you again for, uh, you know, for agreeing to, to come back here again. It means so much to have, you know, to have you here and, um, you know, be so supportive of this event for so for so many years. So thank you for that. And it's probably a great chance for us to segue into, um, I don't think I'm going to do the intro, but I will just say thank you to my co-chair, Hillary, who was a big part of this next step taking place and just also great to work with. So I thank her for her work. All right, well, all right, so it looks like we are back. I think I'm still muted, though, which is a bit strange. Let me see. No, we can hear you. We can hear you. Okay, go ahead. All right, then here we go. We're moving on. So congratulations to everybody, especially everybody who put in a bid. And as you just heard, it's never too late, so make sure you get your bid in by 8 o'clock. Now, we'd like to hear from the event co-chair and board member, Hilary Fishback, Fishback, excuse me, as she introduces our final honoree of the evening. It's my pleasure to introduce the winner of our Brooklyn Champion Award, actor Tracy Morgan. Many of us first became aware of Tracy Morgan when he appeared on Saturday Night Live and then later starred in 30 Rock. Not everyone knows that Mr. Morgan is also a model of resilience. As he discussed and has written about in his autobiography, he lost his father at an early age, experienced bullying in childhood, and fought his way back from a devastating auto accident. Perhaps because of his victories as a survivor, he has become one of our most beloved entertainers continuing to bring laughs and amusement to people throughout the pandemic. For how he has lived his life, cheer he brings to millions, and pride he represents for other children growing up in Brooklyn, we would like to give a warm welcome to our Brooklyn champion, Tracy Morgan. Hi, I'm Tracy Morgan, and I want to thank you for honoring me. I also want to say welcome back to Brooklyn, Forestdale. I know Forestdale does great work for families throughout Brooklyn and Queens. Especially, I want to thank them for their work during COVID. Forestdale made sure kids had food when their parents lost employment, made sure babies had diapers, students had technology for remote schooling, teens had holiday gifts, and families had a safe place to seek help. Thousands rely on them, and they can do their work with your help. Give what you can to this great organization.
Looks like we are live again and of course we're going to be here for all of the challenges that live broadcast brings but i wanted to ask you or to talk to you more importantly about tonight's benefit because it specifically supports the mental health and well-being of children and families that forestdale serves so what are the needs of children and families at this point in the pandemic well thank you jenna and thanks again for hosting you provide such a wonderful presence for us every year. Um, you probably saw this, and I'm sure many of our viewers read in the New York Times last week. There was an article about the tremendous uptick in mental health challenges for teenagers, but also for children. There's a tremendous increase in anxiety and depression. Well, that's across the country. In some of the communities we serve, which have been also victimized by poverty or under-resourced or generations of oppression and trauma, we know that the needs, mental health needs are about twice as great and the services are lacking. And so we really need to bolster them. And so we know what the need is, Jenna, but tonight's really about doing something. Our supporters and our staff are really taking steps to address these needs. Um, and so at Forest Hill, we've increased our behavioral health services in the last two years. We also have a special project focused on early childhood mental health because a lot of our small children, if we can work with their parents and the children together, it can set them up for a much more stable, healthy, and happy life. And so we've worked now with Robin Hood Foundation, the Child Welfare Fund, to really refine and expand services to families who are avoiding domestic violence, um, families who are working to have closer attachment. And these are really important early childhood mental health initiatives. But I wanted to say, you know, we talk about mental health and well-being because sometimes as a child, a dance program, an art program, a science program, can mean just as much as therapy. And so we've done a lot of work this year just to get after school classes to every child, to re-anchor them in a social setting and connection, get them off their phones, um, you know, and, and work with each other and get re-anchored in school and educational progress because our kids had real educational setbacks, many of them during the pandemic. Um, so we've had kids who, I'm thinking of one, girl who was really struggling to get back into school and education. And the cooking class that her mother enrolled her with in with our grant just brightened her up, reconnected her with peers, 
and got her back involved in school. I'm also thinking of another young lady we know came to us as a teenager after she'd been mistreated by a parent pretty badly. And her self-esteem suffered. She really was as many teenagers do, struggling with anxiety and depression, and even thoughts of suicide. And she really connected with her therapist. She did a lot of hard work looking at herself, her life, and what she wanted to accomplish. She built her self-confidence, she learned some coping skills, and she started setting her sights on going away to college. And believe you, when we first met her, she was not ready, she was not there, but this hard work she did in therapy prepared her. Again, got her, boosted her confidence. And so she's now away at college and she still talks to her therapist remotely. A lot of therapy is remote these days in the pandemic, but it's helpful if you're away at college and you're struggling with those freshmen, you know, getting to know new kids in an unfamiliar setting. Anyway, she's doing really well academically and socially. And that kind of mental health and well-being work is really what we're about and helping young people move forward and their families. Of course. Well, you know, it's good to know that Forestdale has taken the steps to meet the mental health and well-being needs of the families that are being served. And it's also exciting to hear about the new Family Enrichment Center. So tell us a little bit more about that. Well, I'm really excited about the Family Enrichment Center and want to talk about it. But I have to go back to something that Chip said earlier mm -hmm. about me holding my breath about what he might say off screen. And Chip, I have to tell you, I only hold my breath when I have to speak. I have tremendous confidence in, in, in what I have to say. Um, so the Family Enrichment Center, it's a whole new way of supporting family and community growth. Rather than saying, okay, these are the services and we're gonna move some into your neighborhood. This is about community direction. The community gets together and tells us where they want the center, what they wanna call the center, what services they want in the center, who they want staffing the center. And so if families really want educational enrichment for their kids, we'll find partners that bring that expertise. If they want work with um, family members who are struggling with substance misuse, we'll find harm reduction programs and work with them on that. Um, it's really about what, if they want certain parenting programs, we'll bring those in. Um, or for some of our families who are trapped in low wage jobs, well, we can bring in employment and career programs, also material assistance. So it's really about creating what the community knows it wants. I was having lunch with someone recently talking about this and she said, oh yeah, because number one, the community knows better what it really needs. And number two, if they define what they need, they're more likely to make good use of it. And so we're excited about this new Family Enrichment Center and other work we're doing. Um, and we also mentioned on, on those slides, our new guaranteed income project. A really generous donor gave money so that a small group of families were starting a pilot for 15 months will get $1,000 a month because they're not making enough money to move ahead the way they want to. And we're partnering with the Hunter School of Social Work to study it. And I think we'll really learn how additional income can make a big difference in families who are trying to do the right thing and just need more resources. So that's the kind of work that Forestdale does. And it is only possible. We're only confident that we can do this work in the Family Enrichment Center well because of the support of donors like the ones who are with us tonight. So thank you. Absolutely. Big thank you to the donors. Well, I believe that does leave us with time for a well-deserved toast. Uh, Bill, would you like to take the honors? Well, so we have our beautifully, um, you know, it's a great vintage of Forestdale sparkling wine. And I hope you can tell this is a prop. I actually don't drink alcohol, but here maybe this looks like sparkling wine. And I just want to toast to the future of our city to the future of Brooklyn and Queens, to the future of the communities we serve. We see people doing amazing work to move forward with their lives every single day. And we just want to salute them and wish them the best going forward. And thank you to everyone joining us tonight to help make that possible.
Absolutely. Yeah. And we remind people, please thank you for your donations. You can keep donating and the auction is open until eight o'clock. So you can still go in and bid if you want to, but thank you for all of your help. Absolutely, Bill, that was so well put. You know, it's just wonderful to, um, and we are so glad to hear from so many of you and to see the enthusiasm for the work that Forestdale does. It truly comes through each interaction and award the agency receives. And we know the next chapter is going to be the best one yet. So thanks again to the sponsors, to the board of trustees, the guests, the guests of guests, the staff, and especially the clients at Forestdale who make the work so rewarding. On behalf of the entire organization, thank you and have a wonderful evening. Oh, 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 oh,